Um, I think my, my job right now is, is in addition to welcoming you to, to basically introduce Daniel, who's done all the work on this, except for the cracking of the whip, which we get to do here. Um, but a, a lot of this was, uh, was Daniel's inspiration. It was his idea to kind of come up with this, and, uh, and we're, we're delighted that you've all come to, to join us in it. So Daniel, take it. Uh, thanks very much, Terry. Yeah, and thank you, thank you all very much for, for coming at a relatively short notice. Uh, to, uh, to DC for this meeting. I think this will be a really, uh, hopefully, a very constructive meeting. And in fact, a huge amount of work has already been done, uh, as, as all of the working groups can testify, uh, in preparing for this, for this workshop. So the goal here is, uh, in, in our minds, is really to think about, in the, in the situation where you have large-scale sequence data from a, from a patient or from a disease case, uh, how you can actually determine this, the mutation or combination of mutations within that particular individual, uh, which are causal for that, for that individual's disease. Uh, and the, this, determining this causality, oh, actually, could you flick my slides on? Yeah, thanks. Uh, determining, uh, ensuring that we have good standards for inferring causality matters for, for a number of, of crucial reasons. Um, as many, many, any of us who've worked with databases of uh, known disease-causing mutations can testify, uh, th these things are littered uh, with incorrectly reported causal mutations uh, due to relatively small sample sizes or, or other errors. Once these things creep into the literature, it can be, it can be almost impossible to actually purge them from, uh, from the record and from, from databases of these mutations. And the existence of these false positives is a major challenge in a number of settings. Um, obviously, they waste research time, but more importantly, they can result in incorrect diagnoses for patients. Uh, and they can influence, uh, falsely influence, uh, therapeutic and also reproductive decisions. I think we'll hear uh, Heidi and David later on this evening talking about uh, some of those implications in the clinical setting. Uh, now, obviously, we're also in an era where the capacity to do large-scale sequencing is, is increasing incredibly rapidly. And so the, that raises the, uh, both the power to detect real mutations, but also the power to generate false positives. So I think without clear standards for establishing that a mutation is actually disease-causing, it would be relatively easy for the literature and for the databases to become overwhelmed with, with false positives. So for the, for the purposes of this workshop, I just wanted to be clear about what we're uh, discussing in, in the context of causality here. Uh, so that is, it is uh, we, we recognize, of course, that it is typically impossible in a strict, uh, a strict sense to fully demonstrate that a particular variant or a particular gene actually plays a causal role uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, we can't actually uh, replace that gene, uh, at least not yet, in a, in a diseased individual and show that, that, is, uh, that, that their disease is actually corrected. So, uh, and while we all accept that there are mutations that are uh, as close to 100% uh, confident causal as, as we can imagine, such as Delta F508 and cystic fibrosis, for instance, uh, we also recognize there is a spectrum of evidence for causality. And what, what we plan to focus on here is, is what we call Im implication, so that is, uh, the, the process of inferring with some level of confidence that a particular variant or a combination of variants contributes causally to the development of a particular disease phenotype. And that, uh, that occurs obviously through the accumulation of multiple lines of evidence and there'll be, uh, each of the different working groups will be providing their own perspective on that, on that process. And just to help define the scope, uh, we felt it was useful uh, to focus particularly on rare uh, germline variants, so with a frequency typically of less than or equal to 1%. Uh, to, and also to consider the full spectrum of disease. We really uh, we want to acknowledge here that there is a continuum of disease between common complex disorders right the way through to monogenic or oligogenic disorders and that the process of inferring causality, although it, can, it, it may be quite different at the different extremes of that distribution, there is still much we can learn from combining information across the whole disease space. And, and of course, we're also interested in considering the implications of causality definitions in both the research and also the clinical settings. So the key outcomes that we're seeking for this uh, workshop will be firstly to identify uh, definitively the key challenges associated with implicating variants as, as playing a causal role in disease. Secondly then to establish guidelines for investigators, reviewers and editors to consider in, in assessing the evidence implicating variants or genes as, as causal in that specific situation. And, and the final outcome which I think is critical is to, is to generate a manuscript that then disseminates these guidelines and, and these, uh, these more subtle uh, discussions about exactly what causality means to a much to the wider biomedical community, and uh, we the the schedule for the meeting, as, as those of you who've looked at the schedule will know, is, is relatively brutal tomorrow. So we'll be getting up uh, fairly early, finishing <laughs> relatively late. Uh, each of the working groups has an hour for their own presentations, 
And each of you has already, uh, each of the working groups has already done a phenomenal amount of work in generating draft guidelines. And uh, there is a, the, the full, a, a summary of the full uh, draft guideline process is, is available in the folder that you have on your, on your table. And we also have the individual summaries that were submitted by the working groups, which uh, often contain much more context and subtlety than these summaries, um, are also available uh, on, on the website that was emailed out uh, previously. So this evening, uh, after I finish, and we've all introduced ourselves, uh, we have um, Mark Daly and Heidi Raymond and David Dimmick will be speaking to help frame the challenges associated with establishing causality, uh, both in the research and also in the clinical settings. Um, then tomorrow, as I mentioned, uh, each of the working groups will be giving their presentations. We, uh, we would urge the presenters uh, in each of those sessions to try to keep their presentations to uh, 20 to 30 minutes, or preferably even less, to allow as much time as possible for discussion. But this is really an opportunity then for, uh, for each of the working groups to present their thoughts on, on the particular area that, that, uh, that they were assigned to, to uh, explore. Uh, and uh, you will notice that there are actually uh, laptop cords available on uh, basically, I, th I think, all of the settings around the table. Uh, so you can just plug in, uh, you just need to call out the number that's present on that cord, uh, and you will then be connected to the projector. So in fact, if at any time during the meeting you have a particular slide or something that you're interested in showing, um, you can just stick your hand up, let us know that there's something you're interested in projecting, and we can uh, get that up for the whole group to see. So, so shall we demonstrate that, since Mike is, is yes. there? Sure. So, so please, would you turn on number 16? So your, your uh, number is just right there in the corner uh, of, your, of your little thing there. So, and there, and there I am. Um, and then we can, get, we can basically switch to anybody. So you do have to be connected in order for this to work, but, uh, but it should work reasonably well. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes. You can go back to 17. Great. Thanks. Uh, and then we would also ask presenters, if possible, to email their slides, um, their final slides for this summary, to either myself or to Chris Gunter, uh, to my left. Um, and we'll... Actually, to both would be... Uh, to both would be ideal, yeah. actually, as a, as a, as a backup. Um, so during the process of the meeting, we'll be attempting to distill as much as possible some of the key messages that emerge from the working groups uh, to, add, to add to the summaries. Um, and uh, we'll also be t attempting to edit some version of the manuscript on the fly. Uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, I'd just like to finish then by, uh, by thanking all of the people who've been um, heavily involved in, in making this workshop a reality. So all of the members of the planning group, uh, in particular Chris Gunter to my left, who was, uh, who was involved in the, in the conception, the idea of this workshop, which stemmed from a conversation between um, Chris and I on Twitter, in fact. <laughs> and, uh, and a huge thanks to Terry Manolio, who really uh, was a driving force behind actually getting this workshop together and ensuring that we, we did manage to bring such a, such a smart group of people into one room. Um, but all of the members of the, of the planning group uh, named here have participated in a whole series of conference calls. In fact, I, think, I believe all of us were present on almost every single one of those calls, which is quite an achievement. Uh, and so I'd like to thank all of them for, for participating so strongly in this process. And then finally, of course, all of the working group chairs who helped to uh, pull together the summaries for their particular section, they're named here. So you can see, uh, for those of you who haven't yet looked through the summary, um, this gives you an idea about the breakdown of the different groups and how uh, the order in which they'll be presented tomorrow. Okay, now, were there further points that uh, I should yeah, make? So Ian, yeah. Ian will make some housekeeping. Great. So you, you probably have seen Ian's name in your email, and, uh, and he's our, our um, uh, program, assist, program analyst extraordinaire. So, so if you could just uh, let people know what we need to know about eating and leaving and sleeping. Okay, so as everyone saw, there are uh, drinks available, or refreshments available out in the lobby. Um, that'll be probably for not much longer, so if you want to grab something, go ahead. You do have to pay. Um, if you are staying at the hotel, you should have filled out um, food forms for uh, to include breaks and meals. Um, if you haven't filled out that form, you can get it at the registration desk right outside. Um, uh, if you're receiving reimbursement, uh, you should have had a form for reimbursement in your folder and just return that voucher back to Sandra uh, by the end of the month. And if you need her email address, you can contact me. Um, if you need transportation back to the airport tomorrow, um, sign up for that at the registration table. Um, let's see. And if you are worried because your cell phone isn't working, it's probably just because we're in the basement of the hotel. Um, and that's about all I have. I guess it makes sense now to start by uh, going around the room and having each of the uh, participants introduce themselves. Uh, starting with Jeff over in the far corner, maybe just uh, by st state your name and, and uh, the institute you're coming from. Hi, 
Ben Voigt, <laughs> University of Pennsylvania. Nancy Cox, University of Chicago. Suzanne Leal, Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, David Goldstein, Duke University. Russ Altman, Stanford. Les B. Sicker, Intramural NHGRI. Uh, Greg Cooper from Hudson Alpha. Uh, Samir Sunyaev, Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Stiliadis Antonarakis, University of Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, Ian Marperi, NHGRI. Heidi Rehm, Harvard Medical School and Partners Healthcare. Eric Green, NHGRI, and I should pause and, and personally thank all of you on behalf of the Institute for coming here and participating in what is a very important topic and important workshop for the Institute and actually for all of NIH, to be honest with you. Thanks. Terry Manolio from NHGRI. Daniel MacArthur, Massachusetts General Hospital and the Bird Institute. Chris Gunter from Hudson Alpha. I'm Jay Shenderay from the University of Washington. David Dimmock, Medical College of Wisconsin. Wendy Winkler, the Broad Institute. John Stamatoyanopoulos, University of Washington. Len Pinocchio, Lawrence Berkeley Lab. David Adams, NHGRI. Ewan Ashley from Stanford. Mark Daly from the Mass General Hospital and the Broad Institute. Don Conrad, Washu School of Medicine. Magdalena Skipa, Nature. Orleva Call, Nature Genetics. Bat Femister, the New England Journal of Medicine. 